Okay, here we go, babies. We've got example 11, hometown USA. In a certain town, 40% of people have brown hair. 25% have blue eyes. 15% have both brown hair and blue eyes. A person is selected at random from the town. What is the probability they have each of the following? Okay, there's a couple of different ways you can set this up. If you didn't recognize it immediately, you can use a Venn diagram for this one. And I'm going to let this circle be brown hair. And this circle be blue eyes. All right. And it looks like I've got 40% of people have brown hair. That is this whole circle. 25% have blue eyes. 15% have both. So 15% goes in the middle. And then just brown hair is 0.4 minus 0.5, which minus 0.15, which gives me 0.25. And then the people who have blue eyes, just blue eyes, 0.25 subtracted, dang it, why can't I speak? 0.15 subtracted from 0.25 is 0.1. Okay, so I can use my Venn diagram here. So probability of A, you know what, hold on, I'm going to show you the other way first. All right, you can also use a table for this. So I'm going to create a table. Reading tables is easy, creating them not always easy. All right. So I'm going to, at the top, write brown hair, not brown hair, and then I'm going to create a row called blue eyes and not blue eyes. So I know that 40% of the people have brown hair. So that's going to be this total column all of these people. 25% have blue eyes, so that's going to be my total row here. 15% have both. Well, the both lives right here in my table, all right? So the rest of the table is pretty easy to fill in because this box and this one have to add to be 0.25, so that's going to be 1. And 0.15 and this have to add to be 0.4, so that's going to be 0.25. And then I have to think about what I need to add up to 1 because this is percentage. Okay, I'm dealing with decimals here. If you wanted to use numbers, 15, 10, 25, then this would be 100 right here. But since I'm using decimals because I was given percentage, I'm just going to let that be 1. That means this right here would be 0.6 because 0.4 plus 0.6 equals 1. And then I can get the rest of the table filled in. Beautiful. The table does give you a little bit more visible information. That's why I wanted you to see the table versus the Venn diagram. And now we can use either one or both of them to answer A. Hair that is not brown. What is the probability a single person selected from this town does not have brown hair? Well, let's look at the people who do not have brown hair. That would be these people right here. So the probability that they don't have brown hair, that's going to be 0.6. See, it's visible in the table. It's not visible in the Venn diagram. In the Venn diagram, you have to do a little bit of finagling, all right? So you have to consider um, several different things in your Venn diagram, whereas your table, easy peasy, you just read it off of the, uh, the table. If you had used your Venn diagram, you would have needed to find your OR out here, which is 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 
These are the people who have brown hair, blue eyes, or both. And then you would have also needed to consider the neither. Okay, the neither is 1 minus 0.5. So that's 0.5. So the people who live in this area of not brown, that would be these people and these people right here. So that 0.5 and 0.1. Easier to see on the table. All right, B, eyes that are blue but not brown hair. So I've got eyes that are blue, but not brown hair. That is going to be these people right here. Pretty easy to read off of the Venn diagram. They have blue eyes, but see the part of the circle that I'm looking at? Only blue eyes. That means they don't have brown hair. So where would you find that in your table? Well, blue right here, not brown right there, point one. All right, C, neither brown hair nor blue eyes. So the probability of neither one of them is going to be 0 0.5. If you'll notice, we already found that from our Venn diagram. But then over here in the table, not brown, not blue, right there. So for a problem like this, you can use a table or a Venn diagram. Sometimes building a table can be a little challenging, but once you have it, it's really easier to use a table to answer the questions. So hopefully that gives you a good foundation to move forward with your homework.